order. And the public hearing today is for application 24 TAC 02, the application of Tyler Ricker, property located at 166 Route 6. The applicant is seeking a special permit to operate in a home op occupation, plumbing and heating, per section 4.12A of the zoning regulations. Okay, the, uh, the notice did talk about another another public hearing to follow this one, but uh, that will be deferred. We'll talk about that later. So this will be the only public hearing for this evening. Um, I see five members here tonight, counting Kevin. Um, the rules for a public hearing are that anybody can ask questions and are encouraged to during the public hearing of the applicant. The uh, Once the, the commission gets to deliberation, only those members that are actually seated will be uh, allowed to ask questions or comment at that point. But I think uh, we've got uh, five commission members here, counting Kevin, the alternate, and so uh, that means uh, everybody that's here now will be able to participate when we get to the regular meeting, the deliberations. With that, uh, I'd like to open the hearing up uh, by hearing from the applicant. If you can uh, you know, tell us what you're looking to do out there, Tyler, that uh, appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I've been in uh, heating and air conditioning for a little over eight years now. Um, currently doing mostly commercial. Uh, we do get involved in a little bit of residential. Um, but my background's mostly commercial, which does translate very well to the residential world. Um, before that, I did a lot of facilities, maintenance, that kind of thing. Um, so very familiar with repairs and, and taking care of mechanicals and that kind of thing. So. How many employees do you have? Um, with the company I'm currently with, uh, we're at about 18 right now. And those 18 employees uh, would be working out of your house? No, 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 no. That's my day job. That's my day job. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, what I'm doing now is kind of just a soft start and, and just kind of starting to get out there on my own, so. Okay. I understand. Um, anything else you want to let us know about uh, about what you're doing? Um, and you don't have to. I think it was pretty straightforward. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's all I can say. Okay. Jim, uh, what have you got for us on on the completeness uh, of his application? I know you were working on the checklist for that today. Yeah, I, I find it complete, um, with one exception, and and that's uh, the the site plan is not an A two. It's not drawn to A two standards, um, and typically that has been handled by way of a waiver. There's not there's not much going on there. There's no so there's no construction, uh, utilizing existing space in a garage and um, office space in the house, as is as is allowed, um, as a use of right. Uh, the the parcel, if anybody uh, doesn't know, it's it's right on Route Six past Burnett Brook, uh, near the field, the post farm field that's on the on the west side of. Of Route Six, the house itself is is pretty well hidden, um, possibly seasonally it's visible. I'm not sure, and said the same thing about um, maybe visible from Aspinall Road, but I, I don't know it for a fact. It's it's set fairly far back. I believe its neighbors are the uh, Post Farm and the the firing range, and five or six neighbors along Aspinall. So there's no no health code issues. There's no no water issues. Um, no storage was requested. Um, I, we did speak about a sign. Um, I did throw a little language in a in a draft motion if if um, the commission chooses 
to move in that direction. Okay. Anything else, Jim? No. So I'll open uh, open the hearing up to uh, the commission members at this point. Any any of the commission members have any questions for Tyler? Parcel's almost eight acres. Yep. It's gonna be like six or seven hundred feet off the road. I agree. Yep. Um sounds good. So if if there's no other questions for Tyler and and, and I don't have any, um I will ask uh, members uh, of the public or others from the town, I guess that would be Eric and Catherine, I think are the only other two people on the call tonight, if you have any uh, questions or comments uh, at this point. This is Catherine and I don't. Okay, thank you, Catherine. I have no issues with it. It seems like a fairly straightforward home-based business application. Um, the applicant would have to understand if the business increased to a size that he had employees working there out of there for him, he would probably have to go back for a modification of the special permit. But um, if he's just running this as a side business out of existing space and he's not building anything and he's not storing large scale materials on the outside, you know, the only other thing I would say is just that you have to be aware that we do have a residential transfer station. So if you're starting to produce waste associated with the bu building of any significant scale, you're going to have to get your own dumpster. Um, from the town's perspective, that seems like it's it. Jed, I have okay. no further comment. No, thanks, Eric. So at this point, do any of the commission members uh, have any Concerns about closing the public hearing at this point. I have no concerns. Yeah. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah. I have nothing. Okay, so at uh, 709, the public hearing is closed. Next up on the agenda is uh, we'll start the regular meeting. And at 7.09, I'll call the regular meeting to order. First up is roll call and seating of alternates. I see Ann Creme is here, Scott, Leanne, Kevin, and myself. So, Kevin, you will be seated for Steve Nelson. I guess you'll be seated for the for the vacancy. Steve Nelson is no longer with us, so you're you're seated as a, a regular member filling in for the vacancy created by Steve. Next item up is uh, additions or changes to the agenda, and I have none. Anybody have any uh, additions or changes? Hearing none, moving on to public comment. Issues or concerns not on the current agenda. Catherine, do you have anything for us there at this point? <clears throat> no, I don't, because I understand that uh, the public hearing on the gravel pit wasn't held and that uh, Mr. Hallisey is going to just give a report as part of the regular meeting. So. Yep, that's correct. Okay. So thank you. Moving on to uh, new business. The uh, new business item is uh, the discussion action application of Tyler Rickett, 166 Route 6, applicant seeking a special permit to operate a plumbing heating business. Um, I think, uh, you know, from from the size of the lot, the location of the house, the size of the business, all that stuff, uh, you know, seems pretty, uh, 
a pretty good fit to me. Um, any commission members have any any concerns or anything that uh, you want to discuss or talk about at this point? I need a waiver for the fact that there was no way to. Or is that yeah. just something Tyler can do? Um, well, so I I was looking you know, at that uh, when when I was going through looking at the checklist today. Jim said he was, you know, expecting a waiver for on for the A2 survey. And uh, I asked, why wouldn't we just put an A for that instead of a waiver? And, and, and the answer was, because that uh, requesting a waiver is what we've traditionally done on the commission. And I do recall that we've done that in the past. You know, I think, and my thought was that with the size of the property being big, size of the business being small, um, an A2 survey, if he doesn't have one, apparently he doesn't, or else Jim wouldn't have mentioned it, is uh, an awful lot of expense for essentially no gain in my mind. And so uh, I could have lived with Jim putting NA in that box or, or the waiver. Um, but I think, uh, you know, with him, with going with what we've done before, which is uh, we've, we've, uh, you know, acted on a waiver for that kind of a consideration. I think that's probably a reasonable approach. The end result. Wasn't it, dr sort of wasn't it drawn on an A2 survey though? The I'm sorry? Wasn't it? Was it actually drawn on an A2 survey? I, I thought I saw I that in. Uh... I don't believe so. I, I'm of the opinion that once you draw on an A2, it's, it's, it loses its credential. So it means that. I know. Yeah, it was, I mean, A2 survey that he drew on, so. Okay, yeah. It's not like he, he's just uh, penciled something out on a piece of paper, you know? Nope. And as you drive by and look at, uh, look at the lot out there, you can see that uh, he isn't going to be bothering any of his neighbors. No. Nope. No. Any other questions from the commission at this point? Okay, I have uh, none either. Uh, Jim, you had mentioned that you had a draft motion for us to consider. Yeah, I sent it out. Um, I mean, I, I guess I'll just uh, read off what I have in my notes. Um, move to approve the application of Tyler Rickard, 166 Route 6. Um, applicant seeking special permit to operate home occupation, specifically a plumbing heating business. Um, in accordance with the application and plan on file. Um, I threw a couple conditions on there, just that the signage be in accordance with the regulations, um, that the applicant is responsible for, for filing the, the requisite notice. I just like to put that in there um, just to make the, the applicant aware of that. Um, and that lighting is in compliance with section 14.1 and section 23, any, any new lighting that's added in accordance with section um, 421 and 23. Um, and Eric had mentioned uh, the, the trash issue. Um, that might be a, a, another item for the uh, conditions. Hey, don't we also need a comment in there about this waiver of the A2 survey? Uh, that was, that should be voted on prior to voting on the, the application, I believe. Um, OK, 
Okay. Now you were you were thinking the applicant was going to put a uh, a sign out on Route Six. Well, you mentioned it, um, and I just there are regulations within the home occupation section um, limiting two by two by two, I believe. I, mean, I just wanted to, to throw that out there. I, I, I didn't think he, my understanding is he wasn't going to put a sign initially, but that at some point in the future he would. Um, yeah, if I, Jim, just to answer that, if I did, you know, I'm not planning on putting a sign up at this time, but if I did, it would be something very similar to the uh, signage that's out there for this meeting that we're having tonight for the special permit. Um, nothing, nothing crazy big or anything like that. Just, small yard sign. Okay, well, I would I would point out that, uh, you know, I'm, you're on a state road out there. And so, you know, the state has probably a say in what, uh, what the signs would be. But for the purposes of tonight's application, you know, I did not see anything in there that discussed the sign. And so uh, not... I was not expecting to see one at this point. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, so I guess with Jim's recommendation, I will make a motion that we waive the requirement for the applicant to provide a new A2 survey other than the one that he's already marked up with his uh, business notes. I'll second. Okay, thanks. Uh, and that was Leanne, right? Right. Okay, any other discussion on that particular motion? Hearing none, uh, I'll call for a vote on approval of the waiver for the A2 survey. Ann? Aye. Scott? Aye. Leanne? Aye. Kevin? Aye. And I vote aye as well. That motion passes 5 0 0. Also, uh, we'll make a motion to approve the special permit application uh, as Jim discussed. I'll second that. Thank you, Ann. Any discussion on that application? Chad, I know that uh, item 51 referring to parking or the plan of parking, when you see attached, uh, you know, it says self-employed, no employees, but that item is specifically, specifically related to the parking. And like Eric said, I don't know if you want to mention anything about the scaling of the business or... I don't, you to... I don't at this point. I, uh, you know, w one of the things we, we need to figure out is, you know, there is a requirement uh, in this, in this regulations on home occupations that we um, reach out and, and review each of the home-based business occupations. I think it's annually when the guy pays us what's supposed to be his $50.00. We don't have a process in place for that uh, yet, but I think that's worth doing just just for those kind of things uh, because um, at some point you do get too big for a home based business. I think uh, where you, where you draw that distinction might be a little different in this case from uh, you would for somebody who uh, the last home based business was a landscaping company on uh, you know a very small lot on Merritt Valley. Uh, it would be different for him than it would be for, for Tyler. Um, but we've got to come up with a process that lets us keep an eye on those things. Yeah. Jed, I am working on a, a putting together just a, a list of businesses, the intent home-based businesses, the idea being that um, the annual collection of the fee sort of correspond with uh, an inspection of the property to sort of maintain that creep. Uh, a lot of these, a lot of businesses tend to just grow incrementally and, and can get away, can get a little, um, can exceed what might have been anticipated upon approval. I think that's uh, probably true. And, and that's kind of why I like that annual, just go out and see what, uh, what's going on there. But again, that, uh, 
we'll come through that uh, at some point, but as far as tonight, uh, I'm not concerned about that yet. Sounds good. Okay, and, and thanks for the question, Kevin. Um, any other comments or discussions? Hearing none, I will call for a vote. Anne? Aye. Scott? Aye. Leanne? Aye. Kevin? Aye. And I vote aye as well. The motion passes 5-0-0. Tyler, your, your business is approved. I would ask you to get a hold of Jim at some point at your convenience and see what, uh, you know, there's some stuff that you probably need to do to get the special permit on the land record and uh and that's your responsibility jim will help you with that but uh we've had some cases where we go back and look and the follow-up documentation wasn't in the land record so i'm going to try and make a better point of getting that done okay not a problem any questions for us tyler uh nope not at this time okay thank you very much all right, thank you. Next, uh, next up is old business, and, and uh, first is the uh, update for the plan of conservation and development. Uh, John, I'll turn that over to you at this point. Okay, thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, so, I after our last meeting, and then again. Last week, um, I believe I forwarded around the consensus, hopefully consensus um, vision statement, which I'm putting on the screen right now. Hopefully people can see that. Um, I'll try to make it a little bit bigger. Um, but this reflects the, the edits and discussions we had uh, last month. Um, I'll just, I'll go through just the, the, um, the central portion of this, um, the, the, the we envision statements. Um, which we did some some wordsmithing and clean up on them. Um, so we envision an Andover that provides housing, educational, recreational, and civic opportunities that maintain the community's excellent quality of life. We envision an Andover that strives to create more affordable housing to welcome a wider variety of new residents and households, ensures opportunity for residents, and uh, actually that should be and ensures uh, opportunity for residents to thrive throughout their life stages. Uh, we envision an Andover that safeguards the integrity of our natural, agricultural, and historic resources through sustainable conservation. We envision economic development that takes advantage of major transportation and trail corridors that serves the needs of the commercial needs of the community and is scaled to fit with the spirit and pace of Andover. We envision a safe and vibrant Andover that connects the community through a network of complete streets and enhances the town's civic campus on both sides of Route 6 at its heart. We envision civic investment in infrastructure and acknowledges and that, that acknowledges and takes measures to address climate change. Um, I'll, I'll stop there if anyone has any, any comments or thoughts on, on how this reflects our, our discussion last time. No comments. I think it looks good. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you. And so then what I did, and hopefully people got a chance to take a look at this, is sort of spinning this forward. Um, I think the we envision statements and particularly sort of the highlighted, um, you know, kind of bumper sticker version um, splits up fairly nicely into what I would propose to be essentially a chapter layout for the plan of conservation and development. Um, and so these six we envision statements would basically become the six substantive um, chapters um, of the plan of conservation and development. So the, the first chapter being dealing essentially with quality of life matters. The second being with affordable housing or housing in general. Third being uh, conservation. Um, fourth being economic development. Fifth, uh, complete streets. And the sixth is climate change and infrastructure. Um, and under each of those, I put, uh, I'm sorry, um, basically topics that would be covered under each section. Because, you know, again, we, we are sort of deviating from a traditional, 
you know, one housing, one transportation, one conservation, one economic development, one, um, you know, schools or what have you uh, into these more broad themes. And so I would propose the first one, uh, the quality of life to talk about the, our existing housing, uh, the school system, recreational opportunities, which could also perhaps go under commercial or um, conservation, but I think they fits here. Um, government and civic engagement and senior services. Um, and so what I would propose um, sort of going forward, and again, I'll, I'll, I'll stop in just a second uh, and get and ask for feedback. But what we would propose is basically then to use this framework to start the breakdown of our conversations of the substance. So um, for in if we adopted this um, in advance of next meeting, the, you know, August or September, depending on how you wanted to do this, um, we would basically have the conversation about the quality of life elements and would I would send out sort of a worksheet um, for all of you to, to kind of fill in some, some blanks between now and the next meeting, as well as getting some ideas about who else should be at the table for that discussion. Um, so in this case, where if we're talking about the school system or uh, recreational opportunities, we might want someone from the school board, uh, someone from parks and recreation, um, someone from you know the senior services or senior committee to talk through, you know, sort of what has happened over the last ten years, um, successes, failures, and and what are we looking at going forward over the next decade to kind of set the framework for each of those topics. And then obviously, when we talk about housing, we'll have different groups. When we talk about conservation, we'll have different groups. But this would be a way to to frame the discussion sort of group by group. Uh, I'll stop right there and and and. Jed, if you want to get feedback. Okay. Well, I'll ask uh, the other commission members if they've got any feedback uh, at this point. I guess maybe maybe we'll we'll ask one question at a time. So, number one, how how are people feeling about this framework to basically structure the plan around those six we envision themes? Is there any any objection or hesitation about that. Oh, it's a good idea. I think it's great. Yeah. Okay. Um, so then given that, and I mean, we don't have to start in this order. That's just how it ended up. But if there's, if there's a, a place where we would like to start, um, at, you know, we could just start at the top and say, let's, let's talk about the quality of life thing. And if that's the case, I would want your suggestions on who should be part of our discussion? Well, I guess before we before we get there, John, and I know okay. we talked about it a little bit the other day. The uh, you know I'm interested in public outreach as we create this thing, and and I don't want to get to the end and we uh, you know, hold a public information session and uh, find out. There's there's concerns right. about right. the way we we've headed, and so I was kind of thinking, you know, we've been working on this for about a year now. I I have gotten a couple of questions on you know how's the survey coming, you know what what did you get from it, and and I think there's probably a presentation that would be nice to give the public an opportunity to hear from us that that their surveys weren't in vain, what we got, and, and before we head on down the road. Now, as I look at, at the, the sections that you've got here, to me, I think the only thing I don't think that we're really working on yet is the affordable housing piece. And I think that's probably about the most important thing on there, but I think everything else is kind of continuing what we're already working on. And uh, and I think that's that's a good news story. We, you know, we, we, the surveys didn't point out anything where we were marching in the wrong direction. Um, but I think it would be good for uh, you know the demographic discussion or or whatever you know the whatever is currently in the introduction to us 
you know, we ought to we ought to tell the public we think we have an excellent quality of life here, and we want to maintain it. And here's a couple of things that we're going to specifically address, but we're kind of working on all those now. I mean, you know, I think the town has is doing a good job on senior services, and we're taking the next step to get a senior service coordinator or something. I forget what the title is, but you know, uh, I think we're we're marching off on all those things, with the exception of maybe uh, the affordable housing. That's that's kind of my thought. Uh, you know, what's everybody else think there? I think we really have to highlight that some way. Yeah. I mean, even even if there wasn't a lot of input from the public, and I don't think there will be, because I think we've got good stuff here. They've had a chance to provide and, and hear what uh, you know. we asked them to do a survey. I thought we got pretty good response from the town on filling it out. I'd like to give them some feedback uh, on that and, uh, and how it got plugged into uh, creating this so they feel that their input uh, is welcome and important. Yeah, so I I'm, I think Jed, are you you? Um, I do think you know a, a check in with the public that could do a couple of things. Um, again, sort of presenting facts and input thus far, and I would think that we could do a public outreach that covers kind of our demographic overview, um, the results of the survey, and then probably you know po possibly a time to uh, unveil the sort of our shared vision statement um, and and intent for you know structuring the plan going forward to kind of basically say this is the back the, the background information we've got in the survey and this is where we're headed um, in over the next you know nine months or so yeah um, and, and even even if we just so hit that thing and we and you presented this little section that we're looking at right now after after the vision statement and say this is the way we're planning on going forward. You're welcome to attend any of these sessions. We're going to be doing, you know, about one one a month, one every other month, something like that. But uh, you know, we'll we'll put the word out to you so you know. Yeah. So I yeah, and so if that's if that's how you'd like to do it, we you know I I'd leave it up to you guys on how you would want to schedule um, a, a public inf a public information session like that. Either either at at an August meeting or as a separate standalone session. Well, and and I I will welcome feedback on this thought, but my my thought would be that we it may be the August meeting we run through the presentation with the commission, get feedback from the commission that there's nothing that we're leaving out on the discussion, and then maybe in September we hold that thing. That might be too much though. Uh, you know, what do, what do the other commission members think? I think as far as holding it during the meeting, I think it would depend on how much is on the agenda for that particular month. Um, if there was a lot, it could get a little out of hand having this on top of everything else it could and uh, that might be a good point maybe we should do it as a standalone session for the public just you know not uh not worry about tying up uh, another meeting because we never really know till we get there what the meetings are are gonna i thought exactly. tonight's meeting was going to be very busy it turns out to not be so so there you go um but we could uh we could run through it in August and uh, then uh, you know, target, uh, I don't have my calendar here, but we could uh, find a date in, in September that, uh, that we could go through that. Sure. I think, I, yeah, I think setting aside, setting aside, uh, you know, an, an evening for just just a public information session, it'll, it'll avoid complication with any agenda items that might pop up. Yeah. 
And we could do it in the new senior center, community center. That sounds great. That'd be wonderful. Okay, so John, I think you know we can we can talk more offline on that, but that's kind of what I like to do. I would like to give uh, you know the commission members a chance to weigh in before we're briefing the public to give you feedback on uh, you know that uh, we're all in sync. So so then rather so, than so do my, that in a public forum. Great. So my marching orders would basically to prepare the the draft presentation. That we'd go through next month. Yep. Okay. I can do okay. that. Okay. Well, I think that's great. And uh, the so I know you went there. Were, there was one bullet uh, under one of the things, and it was community water and septic or something. And I wondered what we would be talking about there <laughs> because you know we we just have to comply with the health code so why what was right. that about well that's that's um more to satisfy a, a state statutory requirement um so that one of one of the state statutory must do's for a municipal plan of conservation and development is to address what the town intends to do uh to manage its its wastewater Okay. Um, and it, you know, our, our answer is probably exceptionally easy. We are yep. ever letting all private properties manage it themselves and, and follow public health code. We have no intent to install sewer lines uh, over the next decade. It's as simple as that, but the state okay. requires yep. that analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, good point. And, and certainly easy to comply on that. Okay. That answers that well. Thank you, John. Any other, any other uh, comments from anybody on that? Uh, where we are on the plan of conservation development at this point. No, but I have a question about the affordable housing. And I think that John was gonna, he was gonna be working with us on what steps we we will or should be taking to uh, jumpstart this. Yes, yeah, so, um... We've and I and I haven't. I, I will all acknowledge not having worked a ton on this. Um, worked a little bit with with Eric on identifying a couple of key municipal properties that that um, I think goes a little bit into more depth uh, and analysis of the of the land than um, Bill Warner had had sort of cursorily done uh, with the affordable housing plan. So we're 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 looking at some you know the potential for for. Um, you know, potential use of, of municipal property. And I am um, sort of tap, tapping my network in the in the home builders um, community uh, to look for potential developers. And I've had a couple of conversations about that this week, uh, potential developers who might be, you know, interested in um, something like a public private partnership uh, where, you know, the town would be, you know, basically making available some of their land um, you know, it, it, with the with the hope that a developer could create um, enough units and enough density that you know um, there could be some lower income opportunities or more affordable you know senior retirement opportunities. So it's sort of beating the bushes a little bit about about developers who might be interested in that kind of partnership. So that's we're looking into that right now. Good. Glad you guys are are uh, I have working on it. Yeah, I have. A, Posted of a guy I need to call tomorrow, right here on my computer. Anything else? Okay, I guess uh, we'll move on to uh, update on the status of the uh, application 2401 for the uh, gravel pit. And I'll turn it over to you, Jim. Yes, as you know, there was a public hearing slated for tonight and the applicant backed out, wasn't ready for it, um, indicated attorney was away. Um, I did have a, a conversation with um, the applicant's attorney today. He, he reached out to me and he was asking for information. Um, Peter Bowman, this gentleman's name, um, tried to make it clear what the commission's concerns are. I directed him to the town's website where, where the file is. Um, and hopefully I will be hearing back from him. And um, I will be in contact with Bill Genovese when he returns from vacation. I believe it's next week. 
but my intent obviously is to to re re advertise the public hearing for the August meeting. Is the attorney available for that meeting? I've mentioned it to him, and he he didn't say he wasn't. So I'm, I'm going to hope. Hopefully, that's hopefully he will be. Tim, can you repeat his name? It's Peter Bowman, out of Cheshire. Peter Bowen. Bowman. B, I believe it's B O W M A N. Thank you. Welcome. And, and Jim, is there um any status of the property? Um, if it's, if it's still for sale or is it, what, what, what's the status as far as that goes? I've heard rumors that it's, that there's been offers on it or an offer on it, uh, but I don't know anything for a fact. And the attorney didn't, I did mention to the attorney and I haven't been able to get a hold of Bill, Bill Genevieve. So I don't really know. Okay. So one of the, uh, one of the items that's uh, of a concern to me, you know, is, is the timeline for the application goes, we have to open the public hearing within 65 days, close the public hearing within 35 days of opening it, and then acting on the application within 65 days of closing the public hearing. There is a, a caveat that we are allowed to extend those dates by a total of 65 days uh, with the agreement of the applicant. Normally, that is time that the town would need to go out and investigate things associated with the application. You know, we've, we've kind of given up half of that uh, allowance, if you will, by agreeing to hold the public hearing at the August meeting instead of the July meeting. I would be reluctant to go any further than that because really the, the purpose of those is, as I said, I think the purpose is to allow the, time, the town to go out and do extra research so that we can come up with the right conclusion. So, uh, so that's my concern. Um, you know, we've been uh, in contact with uh, our attorney uh, a couple of times over the last month as, as we work our way through this. Um, but, but I do want to make sure that we don't uh, slip up and, and give up all of our safety margin because the guy uh, isn't ready to go, you know. The applicant was certainly uh, able to come in on Zoom and uh, represent himself uh, if, if that's what needed for his application. It's up to him to get other folks there. And uh, so I do think that we'll be discussing this at the August meeting. Any other questions for Jim on, on that particular application? Okay. Um, hearing none, that completes the old business. We'll move on to approval of the minutes from the June 18th meeting. And uh, does anybody have any comments on the minutes? First, I, I keep trying to figure out a better way to approve the minutes other than make a motion to approve them, discuss them, then have to make a new motion. And what do you do with the old motion, all that stuff? I'd like to get the get the comments on the uh, thing and we can say, uh, make the motion to approve as amended. So that's, that's what I'm trying to do here as I go through. And I will point out, uh, you know, the only comment I had on the... Uh, on the minutes was uh, both in the members present and in the roll call seating of alternates. We uh, listed uh, Kevin England as opposed to Arneson. And so uh, we need to correct those two, but that was the only thing I saw in the minutes. 
Anybody else have any comments on the minutes from last meeting? Hearing none, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as amended to uh, get Kevin's last name correct in uh, the uh, introduction and line item two. Second it. Okay, thank you, Ann. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote, Ann. Aye. Scott? Aye. Leanne? Aye. Kevin? Aye. And I vote aye as well. Uh, the minutes as amended are approved 500. Zero, zero. Next up is correspondence. Uh, Jim, any correspondence to talk about tonight? No correspondence. Okay. Administrative reports. Uh, Jim? Okay, um, just uh, reporting on the status of what's going on. Uh, do you have a few houses under construction? Well, one house under construction, um, three in the review process. <clears throat> That'd be one on Pine Ridge, one on Center Street, one on Shoddy Mill, um, and the one under construction is, is also on Pine Ridge. Um, the one on house on Cider Mill, 12, not Center Mill, Center Street. 12th Center is, uh, the applicant is proposing a an affordable accessory apartment. I do not have a, a site plan application as of yet. I did request one. Um, and I will be, assuming he moves forward with, with this, I will be working with him on putting together um, the various, the deed restriction, et cetera. Uh, I mean, I'm not gonna, um, I mean, at the wheel here, I know there's there's plenty of, of samples out there. Uh, just want to find one that, that works works best here. Um, other than that, there's just a lot of it, a fair amount of additions, sheds, barns going up. I am working with um, New England Geo to and to update the town's zoning map, and, and that's just really is incorporating some changes that have made over the year that were never really um, made put or put into the to the mylar or for instance the when the town adopted the ARDs they made all the R40 and R80 ARD that was never really done on the on the zoning map a um, few few issues like that I, it was recommended that I by um, Eric that I check with the assessors and see what they're doing for their update possibly save some resources on that. And I, I did commence that process. Um, I don't know whether that's gonna work or not, but I, I, will, I will find out. Um, other than that, I have the, I did send out a list of violations, uh, zoning and, and blade violations. And I'd be happy to answer any questions on that. Any questions for Jim? Okay, we'll move on to Inland Wetlands and Watercourse agent. I guess that really lays on. That would be me. And uh, we we did not have an Inland Wetlands Watercourse meeting this month, so uh, nothing to report there. And next up is uh, John. Town planner. Um, well, I we were just talking about this um, when we got on the meeting. Um, Eric and I met uh, along with for selectmen, um, the group of community development planners from the Capital Region Council of Governments, our COG, um, and they are I, in the process of updating the the, the their Capital Region plan um, and are basically making a point to visit all. I don't know, something like 38 of their communities. Um, and so this was just an opportunity to talk about our goals, um, to share with them actually where we are in our planet conservation and development pro uh, process, and then just talk about projects that might need some support um, 
And, you know, so we talked about some various transportation stuff, uh, our complete streets initiative, um, some economic development stuff, and, and then particularly some infrastructure uh, things. And I think um, Eric uh, and the first select one were particularly emphasizing issues of, of culverts that um, are relatively small, uh, sort of too small to fit under traditional state um, bridge replacement programs, but still a hassle and a, and a concern of the town for um, an expense replacement expense standpoint. So hopefully um, we can continue to work with with Krog and DOT on, on you know, possibly some financial support for for culvert replacement um, in the next several years. Uh, and then beyond that, I've been in touch, uh, basically playing phone tag with um, the gentleman who owns the Andover Plaza. Um, and I just wanted to, you know, uh, get together with him on, you know, a Zoom call or in person to kind of talk about his his plans and goals for his his commercial property. And if there's, you know, opportunity to, to work with the town and, you know, um, facilitate a connection out to the to the Hop River Trail and that sort of thing to just uh, introduce ourselves and, and some of our goals. So I'm reaching out to him. Any questions for John? Okay, um, next up is commission discussion in miscellaneous. Anybody have any discussion topics that they wanna talk about tonight? And I've got one, which is uh, you know, filling the vacancy on the commission. Uh, the notice that's out there now says that if you're interested, uh, provide your input by the 5th of August, at this point, we do have uh, you know two people that have expressed uh, an interest in joining the commission. Um, so, based on uh, Kevin, you being the only alternate here tonight, I was going to mention that if uh, any of the alternates would like to be or, or become a regular member, uh, send your interest to uh, Carol Lee, copy to me, and. Uh, We'll get you on that list. Uh, I'll send that out by email to uh, to the three alternates because uh, you know Kevin's the only one here tonight, and so they can get those in. Um, it already it already creates a little bit of a problem that uh, you know nice problem to have uh, never experienced before is how do we pick from a, a couple of good applicants going forward? And, and my thought was that. I would ask each of the people that would like to be a commission member to uh, attend the next meeting on, I think it's August 20th, and uh, just tell us uh, in a minute or two why why they want to join the commission, why they think uh, you know, they're a good fit for the team, and that sort of thing. After that, uh, you know, I was thinking that. Uh, we would go to uh, executive session just so that we didn't have to, uh, you know, we would feel a little bit more free to uh, discuss who might be the best candidate uh, and that sort of thing. Um, and uh, if if we had an alternate that wanted to be a regular commission member, you know, we would go through and we'll pick that and then, uh, you know, if there's a hole then in the alternate slot, we'll we'll fill that with one of the people that wanted to join the commission, as long as they're willing to be an alternate. I don't know if that's how it goes or not. You know, it's uh, we've always had a spot to fill, and we've been fortunate enough to get somebody that was willing to go fill the spot, and and that was that. Um, didn't take a lot of discussion. Anybody have any thoughts on? why that's not a good plan or a better way to do it. Something else that you've seen done that worked out better. Okay, hearing none, I guess that you know, we'll, we'll go that way. It might not be the smoothest thing in the world, but uh, I think it, it'll work. And uh, so hopefully by uh, the next meeting, we'll, we'll come up with, uh, somebody new to be on the commission. But uh, of the people that have applied so far, uh, I think uh, they're both pretty good. Now, 
I can't remember if we sent out to the commission the information we got on on the applicants so far. Anybody seen anything on uh, our applicants? Yeah. Okay, and then I'm assuming that got out to everybody. Good. Um, that was the only commission discussion I had for tonight. Anybody else at this point? Uh, Jed, maybe I missed it, but I didn't see anything come through on my end. Okay. Um, Do you know when it was sent out? No, it would it would have been a little bit ago. And uh, the reason that I wanted to ask the the applicants to come talk to us is one of the applicants his uh, his email of interest was was fairly brief. Um, that he was willing to serve. And, uh, and the reason that it was so brief, I think, has to do with one, uh, you know, he and I had talked about planning a zoning commission at the senior Christmas party last year. Two, he was on the ballot last year and was elected to the position, but we got into uh, a uh, situation where we could not have three alternates of the same political party. And so that uh, he, he couldn't, uh, he couldn't fill a spot. Um, so that's probably why his, his input was a little bit uh, brief. I think he would do a great job and, and want to, uh, you know, hear uh, in his words, whether he's excited to be on the uh, commission, will he be? Or whatever, so that we can address that. The other guy, uh, not uh, not much experience on uh, on planning and zoning stuff, but uh, a very knowledgeable guy. Uh, seems like a good guy and and wants to be involved more with the town. And so, uh, you know, he was kind of like me when I joined the commission. Didn't know anything about zoning stuff, and uh, but uh, with a little enthusiasm, maybe I learned something. I don't know, but. Um, but anyhow, it, I think it would be good to hear from them. So I will forward that out, uh, forward what I can find out to everybody again, just to make sure everybody's got it. Thanks. Jed, I think the executive session, the use of an executive session is pretty commonly done. Um, yeah, it, it, I, I looked through you know the rules on executive session again today and, and certainly for personnel, items, which this is, um, that's allowed. You know, the thing, the thing that we have to remember is that any votes on actions have to be done back in the regular meeting. So when we can discuss all we want, but uh, to take action has to be done during the regular meeting. And we can do that. Um, any other comments? Thanks, Leanne. Welcome. Next meeting, uh, we're looking at August 20th. Um, with a little bit of luck, uh, maybe that can be a hybrid meeting from, uh, you know, I, I'm hoping we can use the smaller meeting room in the new community uh, senior center uh, for that. Um, Eric, you think we got a chance? Well, there's always a chance. Okay. Not going to give you odds. Not going to give you chance. odds yet. Huh? Okay. Well, if if not, uh, if not, we can we can do it like this. But uh, I think it would be nice to try. It would be uh, a good way to start out. That's after the ribbon cutting. So uh, we'll see what we can do. Then, uh, I you know I do have to put out a a public notice on a public hearing which. It would be nice to have that information. Yeah. In. Okay. Good point. Um, if, if it's not, then I, I'll just, I'll try and work something. I'll try and figure nope. something. Uh, out. that's a good point, and uh, we'll we'll see if we can uh, predict out from when you need to put out the uh, the notice. Um, okay. We'll see how I'll I'll talk to Eric uh, offline, and and uh, we'll see. Uh, We'll see what the odds are. Okay. 
Um, but that's that. And the next item up uh, is adjournment. Any comments before we move to that? Thank you all for attending tonight and supporting the meeting. Thank you, John, for all the hard work uh, on the plan of conservation and development. I think that's coming along nicely. And uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second second. It. Okay, Ann, I uh, heard you, I think, first. Uh, <clears throat> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion passes 500. Good night, everybody. <laughs>